Uh, hi, my name is Mike Rogers. I'm here with Joan Hunter, and we're shooting a few of these to talk about healing Amen. and teach you how to heal. Joan, we were just in a service this week, and we have seen approximately 12 people heal of fibromyalgia. And every time you were uh, cursing the spirit of trauma, mm -hmm. can you please explain that? Yes, trauma is one of the most incredibly debilitating situations that happen. Uh, and it's so important that we get free of any trauma. Everybody has experienced trauma in their life. Uh, no matter who you are, even babies get trauma. And, and it's so important that we get completely free of trauma. Uh, fairly recently, I lost both of my parents within 11 months of each other. And I had totally different experiences with when my parents died. But with my mom, I felt the trauma coming on, I felt the grief coming on, the heaviness coming on, and I had basically lost my voice. And I'm getting ready to do television the next day. I just finished up a couple of services and it had just been a few days since my mom had died. And so I, I recognized what it is because I had written about it in Power to Heal. I had just never had to appropriate that in my own life. I had prayed for other people and seen them completely healed. But this was my time to pray over myself. And I said, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of trauma in Jesus' name and grief. And I command it to be gone. And it is trespassing and it has no right to be in my body. And in Jesus' name, every bit of that trauma needs to go. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command my voice to be completely restored in Jesus' name. And I went, hallelujah. And my voice was like, ah, ah. That's how I was saying the original prayer. But my voice came back instantly. The heaviness left. The grief left. The trauma left. And I still miss my mom, even though it's been over a year and a half. I still miss my mom. But to, to actually experience this in my heart for myself and the heaviness. And it's like, oh, I can't. I don't think I can make it. All that is completely gone. Yeah. Which is it's just so wonderful to, to have that free. So this is for each of us because of... We've lived long enough, we all experience trauma. Right. Sources of trauma can be death in the family, as you said, accidents. Change of a job. Okay. Uh, or moving. It's like, you know, when y'all moved into your new house, it was like, we're moving into the new house, we're moving into the house. It's so exciting. Other people go, oh my God, I'm moving. I can't handle this. I can't. Change. And, and yeah, change. And even if something that might be good for you can be very traumatic on somebody else. Obviously, yes, a death in the family, a car accident, surgery can be traumatic. Um, you know, you wake up and all of a sudden you've had a hysterectomy and you weren't planning on a hysterectomy and you're still fairly young. That is really traumatic. And, you know, or a miscarriage. Uh, different things like that. And it can totally affect different things. Um, it can open up doors of fear. Fear, your life, stress. Which opens up sickness. Right. Doors of sickness in your life. Right. And what happens is that you get traumatized and then it brings on the stress because the trauma, stress produces a stress hormone. Stress hormone's responsibility is to destroy the immune system. You, many people have heard of endorphins. Okay. Those are happy hormones. Mm -hmm. And so happy hormones and endorphins go and kill stress hormones. That's why when you've been diagnosed with cancer that you're supposed to get a movie and laugh and do things like that and get the freedom from that trauma and get endorphins going in your body. So when you curse the spirit of trauma, trauma is the root cause for sickness. Right. So we curse the spirit of trauma, we remove the root cause, and then the sickness has no authority to stay? Right. Okay. And in addition to that, many times people have asked me, saying, well, you know, you're cursing the spirit of cancer, you're cursing the spirit of trauma, you're cursing, what do you mean? And uh, it's a form of deliverance, but specifically when uh, Jesus saw the fig tree and it wasn't producing any fruit, and it wasn't good, it was a diseased bush. And so he saw that, he says, you are cursed because you're not producing any fruit. He cursed it, and it dried up. So we have the authority of Jesus Christ to pray over anything that might be growing on the inside of us, to curse it, command it to die. If it's not producing fruit, I'm getting this, is, this is opening my eyes here. Okay, if it's getting not... Getting revelation even while we're talking. It is. If it's not producing fruit in my life, right. it's like that fig tree. Yes, but it's also if it's causing damage. Okay. Meaning, like with the fibromyalgia, the trauma producing the fibromyalgia, and, and all those different things. And you've got to curse that trauma that came in. 
And I'll give you an example. And you can actually Google cell memory, and, and it will tell you some circumstances. If you uh, die a horrific death, your heart gets transplanted into somebody else, they will have the cell memory of that trauma. And there's actual documentations of stories like that. It's amazing and how the person who actually was murdered, who did the murdering, is now in prison because of the, the heart transplant. Yeah. And the, the drawings that the person who received the heart can, can do it. So that tells you that any trauma physically will remain in the cells of your body, excluding prayer. And you go, get it out, get it out, get, all those, get the scalpel out, get all those trauma cells off. It's simple. You can lay hands on yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of trauma any form of fear, I command every bit of it to go in yes. Jesus' name. Now, whatever has been brought on into your life, into your body as a result, such as chronic fatigue, I curse chronic fatigue, in Jesus' name I command it to be gone. Fibromyalgia, I curse fibromyalgia, I command that to be gone in Jesus' name. And every spirit of pain that has come with it, in Jesus' name. Or because of trauma, you're depressed, oppressed, hopeless. Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of oppression, depression, and hopelessness. I command it to be gone. Any form of trauma that you have experienced, you have the power because Jesus is on the inside of you to lay hands on you and see yourself recovered. Just like that. Amen. It's just so awesome what God's doing. It's welcome. Joan's going to teach us today how to pray for problems in your back, specifically lower back. That's, that's where what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Lower back and how you do that. If someone comes up to you and says, man, my lower back hurts, this is what you do. Or you see somebody walking like this, you know there's a problem with their lower back. And you can ask them just to have a seat. We're going to do a demonstration here today. And then sit straight, all the way straight in the chair. Extend your legs out to me. And what we're doing is we are... Put, I'm putting my thumb knuckles right on his ankle bones. Okay, now you relax your legs, let me carry the weight. And this one is about a half an inch longer. And so this is just a very simple prayer. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I command this leg to grow, all the pain in the back to go, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. See, now they're even, which is so awesome, and then any kind of pain in the back is completely gone also. Now, in addition to that, we've talked in a previous recording about sciatic nerve. And in addition to that, many times people have problems with their tailbone. And their tailbone will hurt. And, uh, and so all you do is put your hand lower part of the back, not on the tailbone, but lower part of the back, and just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command that tailbone to turn and to go into the proper position in Jesus' name. Any trauma that it might have had because of falling, falling on the ice, you know, falling downstairs, different things, any form of trauma to that tailbone, I command every bit of that to be gone in Jesus' name. And watch the people that you, you know, you pray for. It's just so awesome. And what's so neat is that, you know, after being here in the area and ministering and encouraging people, and his wife went to work today and, and she prayed for several people that came in. One lady came by specifically just to see her, just to feel happy that she saw her and then got prayer and got healed. So praise God. It's so awesome. Every single person I pray for, for their arms to grow out or for their legs or to grow in height 100% of the time, mm -hmm. which I'm still overwhelmed by that because I didn't have that success before. I prayed for a lot of people and they didn't get healed. Mm -hmm. Well, see, in addition to what, what Mike was saying, is that, you know, since he's kind of pretty much been around me, he's learned that he can grow and this and the arms and the legs and so forth and so on. But in addition to that, understanding about the spirit of trauma and cursing that trauma from the tailbone, cursing the trauma in the heart. Then, then the different diseases, whatever might be wrong, is in the name of Jesus, command those to be gone. But majority of those are brought on because of trauma. Many times people have had prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer, but they haven't really seen, you know, the fruition of it. Well, I'll go in and say, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse the spirit of trauma on the shoulder. They've had such a problem with the shoulder. The trauma goes, and then they have freedom in their hand, and all the pain goes. And whereas they have had prayer for the pain, 
and it gets better, but when you get the trauma out of it, it gets completely healed and totally healed. Really. You really good? Okay. And now when you okay, now does that hurt when you do that? No, it don't hurt. It's okay. Frozen. Frozen. So the Rose black ice. Eyes. <laughs> black ice. It's got the ice went in there and frozen. Well, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse uh, the spirit of trauma in Jesus' name. I command all scar tissue to go. I speak a brand new rotator cuff mobility to be completely restored in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Brand new rotator cuff. Say thank you, Jesus. sick. I, I've seen you do that. You curse the spirit of trauma first. You do that every time? Almost every time, depending on, on what it is. But it's a good place to start. It, it's a great place to start because if there's no trauma, it won't hurt. If there's trauma, it will do wonders. So if a person comes up to you and says, I have a headache, you curse the spirit of well, trauma? And more specifically, why do they have a headache? Migraine is usually brought on because of something that happened and stress has come on because of trauma, so you curse trauma, residual effect of stress, then you curse the headache or curse the spirit of migraines. Command those to be gone. Hi, my name is Joan Hunter. I'm here with Mike Rogers and we're kind of playing a little role reversal on this one, but uh, what I was doing earlier, God just really, really gave me a word for this area of New Bern, North Carolina. And, and what was, it's kind of neat because throughout the day, God's really even been developing within my heart and within my spirit a greater understanding about the name New Bern. Uh, and the process of going through the city here and discovering different things that had been established here. Uh, for example, um, you know, where the, the main, the city was actually designed in the shape of a cross. And that the center streets here, which was the center of town, was a cross. And it was established on the Word of God. And then what God spoke to me today, uh, earlier when meeting with some pastors, is that this is an area that was going to have a whole new fire, a new burn within them with the you, because it starts with you, and have a new burn on the inside of people. And in and, and the pastors and the leadership and the congregants and the people that live in this general area of New Bern, North Carolina, that that burn is going to go out and spread and, and spread to the neighboring cities and neighboring towns and so forth. And it would cause an incredible burning sensation. And, uh, and I've had several people here telling me, I don't know what it is, but since I've been here, I have a burning sensation in my chest. And, and didn't really know what it was, knowing it wasn't as a reflex, praise God. And, but to, as going through the town and experiencing some of the town and how this is so founded on, on Christ here, and then understanding that the, the name Bern is German and Swiss for bear. And, you know, that, that you can just kind of go all kinds of ways in the area of bear, that we're to bear one another's situations, but we're to be like a bear and to, and to go on the offensive and tear up and, and tear up what the enemy is trying to do. And this is a whole new experience for this area. And the things that of the past that are, were done are going to be made new now. They're going to be made whole in Jesus' name. And they're going to be made new. And then when you're made new, you have a new burning sensation on the inside. And this is going to be an absolutely awesome area. Uh, of the power of God burning with flames of the Holy Spirit like never even thought, hoped, or dreamed about. And this is a, a week of a new beginning. And you know what? That week starts the day you listen to this. Amen? God bless Amen. you.